Welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Baltimore, Maryland to take on the mm, worst scorching hot on a one-game losing streak. Baltimore Ravens, three-and-a-half point favorites. We got an over-under 46 points. Today's video, we're going to preview the entire Thursday Night Football game. Uh, we're going to talk about key injuries. We're going to talk about storylines. We're going to take our favorite underdog squares all the above in between outside of that. We'll start with the weather. It's 50 and clear. It's just, just going to be a nice day oh, down every there. Every Thursday. We've every never th been a... We haven't had bad weather yet. No. Winter's Honestly, coming, though. I don't even know why we give a weather report. Yeah. Our weather we report's just good. Well, in the... Um, <laughs> That's it, probably it, what gets them to click off. Like, brother, yeah. what are you talking In the rare weather. case, I, I feel like people would appreciate that because in the rare if case... It mattered. That when it does matter, yeah, we want to be the ones that provide it to them, right? Because then we're just going to fuck a bunch of shit up. So Hang why don't we just do it when it does matter? Stop sorry, I like fucking weather. Sorry, I like to go above <laughs> and beyond up. for my people. Shut the fuck Shut up. up. You guys believe this <laughs> shit over here? Sunny side, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to take out injuries, too, because it's not important. <laughs> Weather's not important. Injuries not important. This is actually a big injury. Let's game. just skip to the over, yeah. uh, over under, <laughs> <No>, please. <laughs> <laughs> take us away. <laughs> Friedman's. Key injuries. Hank. Cincinnati. T. Higgins. He's out again. Sam Hubbard. Defensive end, he's out. Trey Hendrickson, their best defensive lineman by far, hyperextended his knee on Sunday. Somehow was expected to play he's against pretty much all odds. I, I want to say he'll probably be less than 100%, but I feel like every time people try to project people with injuries, they just like play through it and they go fucking beast mode. But that's huge for the Bengals if he plays anywhere near 100% because he is graded out as one of the best defensive linemen just in the NFL this year. He is right behind Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, and Michael Parsons in terms of just PFF pass rush grade. I don't think a lot of people think about him when they think of that group of pass rushers. So, nah, dude's been criminally underrated since being on the Saints. Yeah, I didn't really, I, I didn't know much. It was him or Derek Carr. <laughs> no. I had to make a choice. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know much about him, to be honest with you. But um, that's, that's big for Cincinnati because when you look at the Baltimore side of the ball, Ronnie Stanley likely going to be out with a high ankle sprain. I think he's actually already ruled out. Our boy Marlon Humphrey. Achilles, doubtful for this one as well. So they've got a couple big injuries to bigger name players. Got some good players just out for this game. Our boy Marlon. I think it's calf. Is it Achilles? Calf, Achilles are considered the same thing. Leg. You wouldn't know that. Like I'm only technically a doctor, but in our line of work. I'm more of a weatherman. Same. <laughs> you didn't think I saw that coming. I think I saw it coming from, <laughs> you two, did? from two kilometers away, southwest. I'll hit you with the coordinates. Two weather forecasts away. Enough. Storylines. Let's talk storylines. This is just a good game. This is one of the good games that we've gotten on Thursday Night Football, or at least one of the games that we could go into it being like, we're excited for it, right? The AFC North. Other 10 weeks of season, we've hated doing that. Facts. I mean, what, last week was what? The Bears and the Panthers. And the Panthers. We've had Patriot games, Commander games. We've had Have we had a Patriots game? I feel like we have. Did we not preview Patriots? I don't know. I don't know. Every every it doesn't <laughs> feel right. Every Thursday game feels like a Patriots game. That's how bad it's been. Fact. But not this week. Not this week. Not now. Not never. The Bengals kind of roller coaster season. They were on a four game win streak prior to losing last week to uh, the Texans. Baltimore was obviously red hot. They lost to the Cleveland Browns. But I think overall they're still both like awesome, awesome, awesome teams. Baltimore is just super well rounded offensive line, top ten in run blocking and pass blocking. They have a great defense, of course. Uh, Cincinnati side of things. Their offense is obviously clicking. Joe Burrow's played probably as good about uh, about as good as he's played kind of like in his career at this point with T. Higgins, without T. Higgins. doesn't matter. He's completely healthy and like ready to just, um, you know, throw up a lot of points on the scoreboard. So we're looking at this, this matchup. And I think the biggest weakness that I saw in terms of like one part of a team versus another was Baltimore's rushing offense versus the Bengals rushing defense. Yeah, so, it's not great. Yeah, so Baltimore, in terms of their rush offense, they are number one in the league in rushing yards overall, number one in rushing touchdowns. They have 19 on the year, number one in EPA per rush. Where on the flip side, Cincinnati, they're one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. And Sam Hubbard, who's actually out, is one of their better run-stuffing uh, defensive linemen. They have allowed the third most rushing yards per game, the third most rushing first downs per game, the second most yards per carry, and the fifth worth EPA per rush. It's not good. It's not looking good for the Cincinnati Bengals on the defensive side of the ball. They've been inconsistent on that side, whereas Baltimore, Baltimore's been a little bit inconsistent on offense, I guess, too, but not recently. No, I mean, they've obviously had some explosion games against, like, the Lions and the Seahawks. 
Um, but, you know, it feels like against their own divisional rivals, these teams kind of have a beat on how to slow down the Ravens' offense. So even with the injuries to Hubbard and the limitations to Hendrickson, it'll be interesting. I, I think they'll be coming ready to play with a game plan. Will this be the Bengals? They don't have a win in the division, do they? Because they, I feel like week one they got beat by the Browns. Week two they got beat by the Ravens. I don't think they played the Steelers yet. Yeah, I guess not. They don't have a division win. That's they that's why us. their odds to win the division were so far out. Yeah. Because, I mean, they've won a handful of games now, but they still have to, like, jump teams because they've lost to all the AFC North teams. But yeah, if they I win this, like, Yeah, this, that this felt them. like such a <laughs> pivotal, pivotal game. Plus, like, it was more of the specific price of it. I think the last time I checked, Bengals were, like, plus 450. And this was, this was after they lost to the Texans. So that felt like if, if you were to have hit it, I wonder – what their odds went to if they post had Deshaun Watson news. Mm. True, because the Browns were ahead of them. Browns were, Browns about were ahead of one. them. Now you kind of just assume they're not going to be ahead of yeah. them. And now it's like since he beats Baltimore and they have the same record. Or no, Baltimore still Baltimore, be one ahead. Yeah. But mm-hmm. they're tied in terms of playing each other. So they'll be one behind still. They, they've, they've, got a, they've got a while they, to go, I think. This is a must, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can still make the playoffs. But this is a, if they want any chance of winning the division, you know, getting any sort of like playoff help in terms of whether it's home field or whatever, this this one needs to be Dude, I, I think, done. like, if they lose this, it, playoffs in general is in jeopardy, not just division. Sure, but this is a time of the year where, like, every game, everyone's like, oh, whatever, that, like, Buffalo, everyone's like, oh, they're out. But Buffalo goes, like, 3-0 and over the next done. three or whatever, then it's, like, it's fine. They're out. No, their schedule's brutal. Buffalo's actually if, in But if they shit. win three in a the, – Buffalo wins three in a row, then – They're not. Then what? Everyone's like, oh, they're, wild. they're in for sure. Dude, it's not happening. You're the public. Whatever, we're not talking about Bateman. Buffalo. They have the same way. They got a tough schedule too, no? The Bengals? Don't they? Bang- Bengals have a tough schedule, yeah. But, I mean, unlike Buffalo, the Bengals don't feel broken. No, they don't at all. Fair. They're getting healthier. They're getting healthier. They got yeah, so many clear know. weather games ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, that's what I look at when I think about, like, trade target videos and stuff like that. Week seven. Everyone looks weather. at, like, strength of schedule. I think I look at strength of weather. We're so sharp here. <laughs> All right, let's talk fantasy. All right, we have guru expert JMO here with fantasy rankings for all the relevant players. Roast me. Lamar, QB4, Burrow, QB7. You're I'm playing both those guys yeah, regardless. Yeah, you could up them, yeah. down them one spot, do what you want. I don't care. Those guys Fine, are it. must starts even in one quarterback leagues. Joe Mixteen, fringe RB1, thoughts? It's fine. Going to get a lot of volume. Edwards yeah. and Keaton are probably the hardest one to get a grip on. I feel like after looking at kind of what I explained before where like the weaknesses versus I, I kind of feel like up. Baltimore might try to play bully ball this entire game and just like really hold a lot of possession. I don't really see. I agree that they can. It's just like, are they going to throw who's, who's winning that between these two? Are they going to throw justice Hill in there too? Stupidly. Like, I mean, it, it, we don't really know the severity of like Keaton Mitchell's health, I guess, but those are two guys. But there's also like report that he's going to get extra work this week. So. Ooh, Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, the way I would look at the running backs is like, what you have in RB twenty eight thirty is almost like you'd be hesitant to play either of them. Whereas for me, I think I kind of see them as like like I, I would play them. I yeah. just think they're safer to be flex spots. Yeah, I mean for me, I I'd be like relatively excited. I think to play either of them, so I I would probably have them closer to that that uh, like RB two borderline. So maybe right. like RB I don't know twenty three twenty five ish area rather than like down there. So I feel like a lot of people will probably have them out of their lineups. In this case, where I, I think in this matchup, I kind of want them in my lineup. Okay. That's then the only like. I guess I'm giving off the because I'm not against them. I guess I'm just not saying they're must. Do you I think? Um, I mean, playing Gus Edwards though, we are kind of relying on a touchdown, and not that, he's not agreed. that that's like unlikely. This Ravens offense is really good. They get to the goal line. That he seems to be the guy, but like Keaton Mitchell feels like he's been so explosive that he feels almost like the safer play, just because it's like as long as he gets. That's, work that's, and doesn't even like, need to be high volume. Like. That's why I kind of feel I feel comfortable that they're both gonna get home. Not maybe not to a high degree. Maybe their ceiling's not there, but I, I feel like relatively good that Gus will probably get into the end zone. I feel good that Keaton will get enough work and make explosive plays. That, I feel like, like if Keaton was even guaranteed like ten carries, you would think he would have him through the moon. Mm-hmm. But it's like the dude's yet to see that, so it's hard to get a grip fully on what they're gonna feed him after the reports and his recent performances. That's fair, yeah. but you're not hesitant to play either of them. No. Okay. But you would play Edwards over Keaton. If, like, let's say you I have still both. think until I think I would rather just be late on this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just give Keaton the reins if I haven't seen it fully yet. I think that's fair. 
wide receivers. We got Chase at six, Boyd at 31, Trent Irwin, the GOAT. I'm glad you ended up putting him in there. <laughs> did, Zay, I, did I write that or you? I did. <laughs> Zay at 36, OBJ at OBJ. wide receiver 52. Talking um, about players we're excited to play. I think, I mean, as long as I'm T. excited Higgins to see is Boyd out. again. Yeah, dude, I think Boyd is a smash start. Yeah. 31 seems. I don't know if I go smash low. start. I, I, I I think we'll probably get a little bit like uh, recency bias just based on like last week with T Higgins for sure. But like if you look at his splits without T, mm-hmm. they're good and no Marlin. Like there are things in his favor. No, no doubt. I, I I like Boyd. Boyd also was like a drop away. I understand that mm-hmm. was like that's on him because he fucking dropped it. But like he could have had a monster way game. bigger. Yeah, yeah. I mean he had a big game. I'm, I'm definitely not hesitant to play him either. You think it's fair to keep? I have Boyd over Zay. Would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. Zay, I mean, Zay's just, he's just not, a, he's yeah, not doing especially it. Especially if you're not in PPR. You There's a lot of players team. that I feel like, so many wide receivers that week one just like splashed. Mm-hmm. And like since then, just. It forever it, sticks with you. It's Zay, it's Calvin, it's, I can't think of the other ones off the top of my head, but I feel like there was like a group of like five or so of them. Even you could argue, I, I still believe him, but you could argue Ayuk. He hasn't really been. Uh, I would. I feel like Ayuk has been when he's healthy. I feel like he's been way better than most of those guys. I, I would have put them above him, but he still really hasn't even came close to what he did week one. I guess. I mean, his his week one was like insane, though. Yeah, and I still have him in like eighteen. Yeah. So I'm not saying he's anywhere near these guys, but definitely his week one bumped him up to like, oh, is he a wide receiver one this year? And he's still not that good. Where Where is he? Where is he at right now? Ranking? Is he on the top thirty four video we just did? The fantasy no. one? No. No, he's not. Interesting. I mean, he I'm missed time, sure and it, just in that offense, like... But I feel like he's days. putting together a bunch of, like, four for 80 in a touchdown games. I mean, when I was doing... When I was making the board for Deal or No Deal, between underdog projections and just kind of consensus rankings, I think he was, like, top 12 this week against the Bucks. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, that's just one week, but, you know. He's got... His last two games, he has put up 13, which is decent. I didn't realize against Cincy, which... That's pretty good. So I yeah. feel like that's that's kind of always been Ayuk's game, just like a quiet, yeah, quiet whole gang of yards. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, I feel like you're <laughs> underrating him a little bit. He he hasn't had like a a ton of ceiling games, but he's been like quietly pretty good all year. Um, all right, I'll, I'll keep it done. I threw Trent Irwin in there because <laughs> he plays a fuckload of snaps when Tegan is not playing either. We saw it last week. He played like eighty percent of the snaps. Ended up scoring the touchdown. Wasn't like super involved. I think he only got maybe four targets. But I also think you could do worse than him if you are looking for, like, a random flex play. A lot of people playing, like, 14-team leagues or whatever. They need random guys throwing their flex, PPR, yeah, I mean, or whatever. You could do worse than him. You'd probably throw him in over OBJ. Um, Like, OBJ, you need a score. Same with him, possibly. Yeah. But if you just want to bet on the more passing team, I don't think it's crazy to have him just around that same 50 range. Yeah, I think that's fair. OBJ, like, r- randomly played season low. He had, like, the big touchdown last week, but he – Played like forty percent of the snaps yeah. or fifty percent. It came out of nowhere. Well, still, every week is like OBJ still dealing with yeah. blank injury. It's like still day to day. It's like I think he just doesn't want to practice. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he that just dude. hates practice. Yeah. Tanner Hudson is he worth talking about or am I just tripping? I did look at it a little bit. I threw him like above like Daniel Bellinger, Noah Fant. So like I I put him in tight end 24, 23, but that feels like they're forcing him into the offense. Like it's just something I'm not going to bank on. Kind of yeah. like the Gus Edwards thing. With Keith Mitchell, if the, if he's going to surpass Irv Smith, that's fine, but I'd just rather really see it before I give him an edge. So he's had, like, two decent games back-to-back now, but his he's not, like, that involved. He's getting work when he's on the field, but he's not on the field that often. They're splitting it between, like, it's like a three-way timeshare between him, Irv Smith, and Drew Sample. I'm like, his floor is, like, zero for yeah. zero on a given week. <laughs> but, like, he's he's not even really, like, that athletic of a player or that good, so I, I am hesitant. He's will so say scoring tomorrow, isn't he? hundred percent. First so touchdown. Scoring. He's popping. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably a good bet. Um, I will say, like, in the one league, I, I had Goddard, who got hurt, so I had to pick up a tight end, and it's uh, a relatively sharp league, and it's tight end premium, so there's not a lot of good ones available. I had to pick up Bellinger last week. Bellinger last week got me, like, seven, and then I picked up Tanner Hudson, but then I saw Higby on the waiver wire. So, like, I'm taking, you know, guys like Higby in that – in that um, For sure. In that tier or whatever – way over guys like this. So for anybody out there that's like maybe tossing the idea around trying to get cute, that's what I'm doing there. It's it's really only like if you're desperate, go for it. But like don't 
don't just bump him above guys just to it. Yeah, like that. If, if Higby wasn't there, I'd probably have played him. I didn't. I wouldn't feel good about it, but I'd play him over, like you said, Bellinger. I'd have played him over who else was available on the wire. I don't know. Dudes like Donald Parham and shit like yeah. that. He's scoring. Hondo. All right, let's move to our favorite underdog schlips. Uh, as always, they give you a free square if you're a first time depositor and you use our code BDGE when you sign up. Ten dollars all the way up to a hundred dollars. They're gonna double whatever you deposit. Plus, once you get onto the app. They will show you that 0. .5 total yardage square for Joe Burrow. Go hit it. And then go hit Keaton Mitchell, 36 and a half rushing yards. As I've kind of yapped about the entire video, the Bengals' rush D is not good. I think that they've came out and said Keaton's going to get more and more involved. Obviously, it can only go up. But I think we're going to be closer to what we saw two weeks ago where, you know, he saw near double-digit touches. He's so explosive that, like, one play gets him around this yardage. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if if he's healthy enough, if he's close to like 75%. We're going to see a game, I think, where they just lean on hot hand, you know, where it's not like roll. It's more like, oh, Keaton's playing so well that we're just going to let him ride to up to like 14, 15 touches. Could be this game. Again. I feel like they did that a little bit with Justice Hill in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. I remember Justice Hill got a few goal line carries just because yeah. it was like he was the thing. Just there. Yeah. When yeah. I was making Fucking the uh, Monday night video, there was like three lines up for Thursday night, and I just saw it. He was one of them. He was at like twenty eight. Keaton. Yeah. yeah, and then the report came out, and it's yeah, he uh, shot. I up. think he's gonna eat. Yeah, I, I I really like Keaton Mitchell. Um, this week it's a low yardage total for him, I think, and and I think the Baltimore will just for the most part stick to the ground game since he's 29th and run deeper PFF, twenty third in tackling. Keaton is just he's he's a fucking lightning bug out there, man. Forty six and a half rush and receiving though. You like just his rush line better? I didn't see. They didn't have that up when I took it. Does he originally. get receiving work? He like they use him in the passing game. Like he had like a thirty. I mean, he's definitely catch. an upgrade over Gus. Mm-hmm. So they're probably gonna. But no, he's he's pretty good in the receiving game. I, c- I could see him forty six and a half. It's not bad. Yeah, that's where he was explosive last week. Off a little screen pass or something. Explosive everywhere. For my underdog square, I'm gonna go with Tyler Boyd to have higher than four receptions. We talked about. His splits, when T. Higgins isn't around, he becomes the two in that offense. This is just kind of simple. He's averaging eight targets, six receptions. This line just kind of feels like underdog is unsure of whether or not Higgins is going to play. A little little trappy. It feels feels trappy. It feels trappy, but I feel like I know where the trap's coming from. You know what I mean? It's coming from the fact that T. Higgins is not officially ruled out. No, he's, he's out. He's is ruled out. Yeah. Okay, then this is a huge trap. I don't know why it's, it's still stuck at four. I yeah. just think Boyd, Boy, I feel like Boyd has done this before, where it's like you feel like it should be Boyd, and it's just fucking not. Mm. He just face plants. I kind of like Jamar. He's at like 78, and I'm like, the yardage. There's like a decent discount for Jamar. I saw seven for 78, yeah, and I was I, w- I was thinking it over a little bit for sure. Seven receptions feels high, but I like think 78 just yards feels good. Res- rightfully respecting the Ravens' defense, but no Marlin? Like, yeah. I'm about to change my pick. <laughs> Jamar's so cooking. Boyd at four feels good, though. Just, you know, because the push the push factor there. Yeah push, yeah, push plays big into my pick. I got Mark Andrews over four catches. He's hit or pushed this in eight out of nine games this season. We'll take that. I'll settle for a tie at worst case scenario. We're just trying to give you four ties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> four pushes. Free square plus the free square plus four pushes. <laughs> if, you, if you can get your money back after <laughs> yeah. you risk it, that's a dub. <laughs> Uh, we <laughs> talked about the uh, Bengals rushing defense. I think they have a bad defense because to tight ends they give it the six most receptions, third most yards. Yeah, I just I, I don't mid. think they're great. I think they're good on the exterior, yeah. relatively. Yeah, their their corners are always like no names. It, it's like Joby Owuzie, top ten corner this year. Like they always okay. got like four dudes with names yeah. just like that. Jesse Bates gone doesn't matter. Goat. But uh, yeah, we're we're playing big on the tie. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna one one x your money on Thursday night football. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get your money back and because they take transaction fees and you lose <laughs> money. <laughs> and Jamar over 78 yards. Make it a five-leg. No, five-leg push. Love that. All right, so let us know what your favorite underdog squares are, and we'll move to our pick em for the game. Go ahead. Take us away. JMO. I got the Bengals plus three and a half. <laughs> Must-win game, giving me the hook. The hook, I Better feel like, quarterback. is, is going to come into play here. Maybe. feels like this line should probably be at three. I, and just, I just think it's kind of like a – I'm, yeah, maybe I'm, like, delusional. I think it's kind of a 50-50 game, and I'm going to take the team that's getting points. Yeah, totally. Especially with this division, you know, these two teams plus the Steelers and the Browns, it feels like these divisional games in the AFC North always come down to a field goal. It feels like when in doubt, just take the underdog and the points. They're close. They're dogfights. Yeah, I don't know. Three three 
seems mysteriously high. Three and a half, sorry. Ravens going to beat the shit out of them? I don't know if they – I don't know. Like I don't, I, I don't like think I the saying, Bengals are in like get the shit beat out of them territory right. anymore. I don't think it happens to them again. And like I was saying, I feel like Trap. the Ravens, we've seen them destroy teams in the NFC, like the Lions and Seahawks, where I think when teams like that are facing Lamar for the first time, their offense is unique enough to where they just are so underprepared for that. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think, you know, the Steelers the Bengals, the Browns, they've seen so much of Lamar. They they've just kind of know how to. against him so many times. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you remember? There's no way they, these teams would survive without a game plan against Lamar. No, for sure. The Super Bowl year, like Joe Burrow, first time playing the Ravens, are like, he threw it for like 500 yards. I was looking back at his, his game splits because I was thinking about his total yardage line. And I was like, how's he done against Baltimore? But you got to remember, I, I think it was like two years ago, Baltimore had. Uh, That's true. I think an, they were hurt. Uh, they were banged up, like mm-hmm. an awful secondary. He, he So he played them twice that year. One, he went for over 500. I think the other one, he went for over 400. Yeah. But then the last three times they played, twice last year, once this year, he went for under what his line was on underdog oh, now. Okay. So I, I, I don't know if there's much to glean from it, but I probably wouldn't take too much away from those huge games a couple of years ago. You're right. I forgot. They were, like, shattered. It was, it was a weird year where it's like you wanted to play everyone against fucking Baltimore mm-hmm. secondary, I remember. All right, I'm going to take the Bengals as well. Yeah, I'm going to take the, the the points on the Bengals I side. I feel like I... All riding with the Cats. If I had to pick a money line, I feel like I'd still pick... I just think when they need it the most... I mean, yeah, you're not picking Baltimore money line. I'm going to pick Joe. I like it. Joe, I, who? Are you taking Bengals? I'm taking Bengals, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, again, it, it comes down to the hook. If this was a three flat, I think it, I would be more on the Ravens. I don't actually love Bengals plus three and a half. It just There's no way I'm laying three and a half with the Ravens. I think that's more of what it is, but... Both coming off a loss, so it's pretty interesting. Over under, I like the under forty six. I like the under too. Just again, Fine, I'll go over divisional Thursday game. Five hundred yards. Clear weather. You got clear weather on your side going for you. Honestly, you know? but you know, like you said, the Ravens probably going to pl- try to play bully ball, keep it on the ground a lot. Yeah, ticking clock. I think I'm just fading you guys. The under feels like the right pick. No, I, we can't. I mean, all, if we you can't all say under, why why can't we all go Bengals and under? I feel like. If you were to blindly take the underdog plus the points and the under every Thursday night game, you'd be sitting pretty well. Probably. So why can't we all take it? Because they're catching on. Dude, I will say it. It does kind of feel like the hip thing to, like, take unders now. Because, like, s- these games have been so low scoring. It's no one fucking scores. Yeah. No one no one Not scores. That. And even with these lower totals of, like, someone. um, like like What was the best shootout this year? Like, Chargers-Lions was pretty big, but, like, that's so recent. There's been a couple. I mean, the, the Texans Bengals last week yeah. was good. Um, I'm talking about 37 30 type mm, heat. That wasn't that, that far was off. That was Lions Chargers. Yeah, I'm saying, like, outside of this recent week, I feel like I can't remember a big. What about the Seahawks Lions? Lions? That was good. That was a good one. That was an OT, too. Lions are like that, huh? There was also Dolphins Broncos. That was a one sided shootout. Fucking incredible. <laughs> 90 <laughs> they, points they in that game. They let up 70 points <laughs> weeks ago. Good God. Never yeah. forget. Um, so, I mean, the, the books probably will catch on eventually. I saw a crazy stat that was, and I, I, I'm starting to hear this trend more and more, and I started to hear it in the preseason before the season started. And I wasn't, I, I didn't know like what really to make of it, but there's a lot of people doing analysis on defenses playing cover two, like mm-hmm. deep cover two. And someone tweeted out the touchdown to interception ratio throwing against cover two defenses this year. It's something like 18 touchdowns to 48 interceptions or something. Damn. It, it was something that was like, whoa, that's like super notable. Yeah. It doesn't feel like fluky or anything. And defenses are playing at that type of defense. It's such a high rate. And it's so probably a lot of the reason scoring is down. We're not seeing as many like explosive plays, explosive plays deep shots down the field, et cetera. Yeah. I will like, I was going to say, you gotta I got to run the damn ball. I think eventually books will probably catch on. But I think the tough part is, is people naturally just want to bet overs. And it, it could be the people who don't adjust, who see these totals of, like, 41 is like, oh, I'm for sure taking it over there, you know? It's the JMOs that don't adjust. Yeah, I'm so j- bad. JMOs keep <laughs> slamming <laughs> Every overs. week, Jags Chargers over. Every time. I'm so going to Connecticut. <laughs> you wish you it was Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. All right, take us away. Take us away, JMO. Give us a like, give us a sub, take the over. Bengals plus three and a half. Let's go get some laundry, brother. Got to get laundry at this hour. I know, it's so dirty. I hate it. I would just leave your clothes there overnight. It's facts. Is it washer or dryer? Like, are, it, are you 
You're picking them up out of the dryer. Oh, you don't even do your own, eh? Yeah. Do you do your own? I don't do my own. Dude, isn't it like 30 bucks to do a load or something? It's ridiculous. I don't... It's usually like 18 to 20. That is crazy. I I can do mine for five. Yeah, but you got to fucking sit there and worry about it. I don't got to sit there. Who the fuck is going to steal my clothes? Who the fuck wants my clothes? But they're just just sitting there. The riffraff that's over by the laundromats, the like self you just get to walk in dude, and give for, it to me. Dude, yeah. for three years, I've left that shit in washers and dryers. Like, ain't nobody You're touching You're wearing it. a hobo's clothes. You don't yeah. even know. Wearing a rat. Someone taking a shit in your laundry machine. I'll take a shit just to teach <laughs> you a lesson. <laughs> just to prove you. Yeah. <laughs> prove you smelly Big ass. dumb bitch. They close at six. How fucking far away is it? Like 34th and 5th or something. Are you serious? You need an apartment. That's your closest laundromat. I don't know if it's the closest. It's the closest one the lady does it. She's nice. She likes you. She's awesome. She's nice. <laughs> All right, Jim, I'll take us away. All right, I'm going to go get laundry.